Good morning. We have the opportunity of talking uh, with a close friend about uh, security issues. Uh, and so um, it's an interesting opportunity. Let's uh, get from, from him a uh, presentation. Uh, thank you, Juan. It's nice to be uh, here to talk to you. Uh, to introduce myself, uh, this is Jean Chetin. Uh, I have political science degree, in, uh, master's degree in political science. Uh, I conduct freelance research on the Turkish and Middle East affairs, and my specialty in the Maghreb, uh, Maghreb region, uh, like particularly Algeria, Morocco, an issue, and uh, refugees in the Middle East. Uh, I'm also interested in the Syria, since it's very, very close to uh, Turkey, and it's one of the major conflict in the world, the Middle East. So, if you have a specific question, I'm happy to answer. Yes, it, it will be two scenarios. First, uh, on the Turkey's uh, surrounding area and the, the problematics there. And uh, after that, uh, some about uh, Morocco and Algeria mm -hmm. with uh, some kind of uh, the elephant that is uh, inside, but no one talks about it. Is the French problem with the origins in the um, conflict with Morocco and Algeria? But um, we will uh, focus first on um, Turkey. Uh, mm -hmm. and ob obviously, not Thanksgiving Turkey, the Russian uh, country, uh, has uh, many problems inside, but um, the that uh, supposed uh, that uh, was um, in uh, 2016 um, um, good uh, followers and uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it has uh, part of the Black Sea so uh, it's part of NATO so it will be uh, a problem within uh, Ukraine Russia conflict but it has a low level um, situation it is um, close to Greece uh, in uh, 100 ago it was a war um, um, after the first world war uh, that was uh, pretty very hard um, transit of people uh, go from one side to other and uh, as uh, uh, remain it is the Egeo, Egeo Island um, it, to talk about Syria Syria is, uh, mm -hmm. has uh, a circumstance uh, that the Turkeys are on the both sides mm -hmm. so Turkey is uh, supposed to be involved um, by his uh, geopolitical views so it's a, a, a complex uh, game of mirrors yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Sorry, right. mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, starting with syria uh let's say that turkey has some geopolitical purpose plans in syria also some it's it's very heavily connected to domestic politics of turkey since uh, Kurdish forces, Kurdish military, military and political forces in Syria uh, are one of the major force on the ground and of course it's very very well connected to Turkish domestic politics anyone of Turkey would understand what I am talking about uh, in Turkey there is a problem, a Kurdish question like it's one of the uh, major major problems, ethnic problems in the Middle East and the uh, region and of course, it's it's connected to domestic politics of Turkey. Also, it has geopolitic uh, purpose, geopolitics um, goals in Syria. Because uh, after in the beginning of 200 millennia, uh, Turkey is kind of in regime changing. Okay, formally it's the same regime, same government, same system, uh, but policy of geopolitics purpose geopolitics of uh, geopolitics goals of Turkey change uh, dramatically uh, Turkey before 2000s was kind of European country and uh, like regular Balkan country but after 2000 uh, it became uh, a country who wants to lead Muslim countries in the world 
and of course middle east like uh, you know it's champions league uh, of the of the countries uh, countries who want to lead something you know so it's it's not easy for turkey turkey in syria especially uh, wanted to create um, partners for for himself like muslim brotherhood for example and uh, like government of turkey uh, in, a, in a good cooperation with Muslim Brotherhood in Syria, they thought they can change regime in Syria, but apparently it didn't work because some unexpected actors like Russians and Kurds uh, involved uh, the war, the civil war. So it's, uh, but right now, uh, I think because of Ukrainian issue, the things in Syria kind of uh, calm, I will say. Uh, there is no major developments on the ground. I mean, military military ways wise, uh, but apparently the parties like the non-government, um, non-state military organizations like Al Nusra and other jihadi organizations are getting ready for a major military attack from the regime. The regime also getting getting ready to attack to clean up uh, certain areas of Syria uh, from the jihadists and in one side Turkey is arming the uh, non-state organizations and other side the regime is arming the regime uh, Russians are arming the regime Syrian regime but now it's kind of locked uh, the world is waiting what's going on in, in the Ukraine Yes, the Syria scenario appears to be stabilized, uh, at least uh, on the Western public opinion. It doesn't appear on the media. It appears to be uh, quite a normalized situation or, or a standby. So uh, it's uh, it's clear that the. Uh, Turkey has uh, some power, uh, regional power, but uh, it cannot uh, focus um, on every scenario it takes. Uh, so um, it uh, has Syria. Mm, the relations with Israel has been uh, problematic, so um, going come and going uh, with uh, some kind of. Uh, contenders, um, friendship, not friendship, uh, that uh, that boat that was supposed to go to Gaza, and that those things collides with gas situation on the eastern Mediterranean and uh, that uh, small island called Cyprus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let, let's talk about what's going on between Israel and Turkey. It's quite interesting, I will say. Like you say, a couple of years ago, Turkey was like uh, the president once uh, expressed that he wants to go to Gaza. Uh, this plan never ca came to true. Uh, and they withdrew the ambassadors. Each government withdrew their ambassador from the countries, uh, from the capitals. But right now we are talking about an, uh, renewing the relationship between two governments, two nations. Yes, a few yeah. hours ago was uh, a new uh, that uh, talked about the uh, Turkish saying oh there was a conspiracy to kill an, um, a powerful uh, man of Israel and we yeah. have handled it we gave security to Israel yeah that's true that this is the thing I was going to tell you it's it's quite interesting uh, the interesting part is not that Turkey stopped this, uh, this operation, uh, allegedly uh, operated by the orchestrated by the Iranian government. The most interesting part is that uh, they somehow leaked this information to the media. So that's a good sign uh, that Turkey and Israel are having good relationship, and it's it's very connected to relationship between Turkey and Iran as well. Uh, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, Turkey had a uh, gas shortage. Ira Iranian government uh, basically cut the gas to Turkey, and all the industrial, uh, all the factory industrial facilities stopped due to like uh, shortage of the power. And uh, since uh, war in Karabakh, 
the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Uh, it's very clear that Iranians are not happy about Turkey, uh, the policy of Turkey, because Turkey, uh, government of Turkey, uh, transports Syrians to the South Caucasia, uh, which is the backyard of Iran, and they support Azerbaijan uh, against Armenia. Uh, that really makes Iranian government unhappy, obviously. And it's very connected to Turkish-Israel uh, relationship. Uh, since Netanyahu uh, lost the election, uh, I will say the relationship between Turkey and Israel is getting getting better. Uh, it, it was like him, himself. Netanyahu was one of the biggest obstacles uh, uh, to, to improve the relationship between Israel and Turkey. So yeah, it's it's quite interesting. I will say the relationships between uh, Turkey and Israel are growing, growing in positive way. And in the other hand, uh, relationship between Turkey and Iran are getting more negative, impacted. This is it's interesting mm, watching um, some kind of uh, information or um, looks about the. Uh, um, <laughs> Azerbaijan people are in some kind Turkic people, so um, oh, there yeah. there may be a link between Turkey and Azerbaijan, and Iran is um, concerned because there are some Azeris inside Iran, so they yeah. don't want an a big Azerbaijan on the other uh -huh. side of the border, because uh -huh. uh, a big Azerbaijan would make uh, some kind of destabilization inside. So, uh, it's uh, 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 like the what's told in the 19th century, it's the big game. Yeah, it's big chessboard, I will say. This part of the world is like big, big chessboard. Like you say, Iran Iran has uh, other Azeri minority, but it's not some Azeri. Actually, it's like a quite big uh, population inside Arme uh, Azerbaijan. Even the leader of Iran, uh, Ali Khamenei himself, is an Azeri, for example. So it's it's quite big uh, population inside Iran. And uh, since Turkey is supporting Azerbaijan against Armenia, uh, it's it's quite normal that Iranian government is concerned that someday uh, it will turn against uh, the regime. So, like you say, it's it's quite connected to each other from Middle East to South Caucasia, and also North Africa. Things are uh, very connected. Yes, um, I may uh, introduce uh, uh, another scenario, but not for talking about it. Uh, mm -hmm. You said uh, Ali Khamenei's Azeri, uh, but uh, we can see in uh, Ethiopia that uh, the current uh, prime minister is coming from Oromo ethnic, but uh, the Oromo uh, clan has uh, appraised against uh, the, the government, so um, mm. this, uh, there has been uh, a decoupling about uh, Tigray, so it may, I don't, I don't mean it uh, has to be, but it may happen that um, Ali Khamenei to be Asheri and the main group of Azeris, uh, the couple, uh, the main uh, group of uh, Iranian politics. But uh, um, I don't know who what, yeah. uh, what happens uh, or could happen in the future. You have a point, but uh, on this I would say, uh, you know, Iran is not, uh, it's not an ethnic country. All right, you can be Azeri, you can be Kurdish, you can be Persian in Iran, you can be Baluch, but uh, what does matter is your religion. If you are Shia, you are a good person, you are a good citizen in Iran. So uh, it's uh, in Iran, things are, things are not about nationalism or ethnicity, but it's about the sectarian and uh, uh, the religion. It's interesting uh, talking about Iran because it they appear to be that uh, in uh, Middle East scenario um, has uh, focused uh, uh, from uh, being uh, contended with Israel to be contended to Iran. So um, every Sunni country has to be friend to Israel 
-hmm. to um, be against the Shia nation that is red mm, it uh, we will not see um, a specific agreement with Saudi Arabia but it is not necessary with uh, Israel and Saudi Arabia to make a business including uh, that uh, Phantom City in near Aqaba. That who knows, it uh, can happen or may be a dream. Well, I mean, this is Middle East. Everything is possible, and I will say uh, behind the doors, uh, something happened between, between Saudi Arabia and Israel for sure. And in some diplomatic level, I'm sure they are in a connection, in a relationship. Uh, the because Iran is for sure the biggest threat for these nations, for both countries. So they have a common en enemy. So it's it's very um, it's it's fair to say that they have somehow connected, uh, somehow um, communication uh, behind the doors, behind the closed doors. Uh, for sure, that happened uh, in the first Gulf War in nineteen ninety one that uh, some uh, mechanic instruments, uh, tanks, mm -hmm. uh, for example, was uh, sent, uh, but uh, giving up uh, some uh, letters uh, made in Israel, but uh, mm -hmm. through the Americans uh, gave uh, to Saudi Arabia to um, try not to uh, be invaded by Saddam Hussein. It's, it's real uh, and it's history. But uh, let's let's move to Cyprus and uh, a situation that came uh, from 1974. The Enosis was uh, stopped uh, by war, by invading the north side of the island. It's not uh, many times said that uh, well, the, the south side, uh, some uh, Akrotini, the British bases, um, Brexit uh, was uh, mainly focused on uh, Great Britain, uh, some Gibraltar, but uh, there is uh, some uh, some kind of uh, situation there, um, and uh, the, we have uh, some stabilized uh, situation since uh, the United Nations plan uh, to re reunification in 2004 mm -hmm. uh, there there is no news uh, from where this the situation within uh, the Turkish area and the main uh, Cyprus Republic what what happens there now yeah uh, like you say we it has been a long time we didn't hear about this un uh, policy of uh, cyprus apparently it stopped and since the problem uh took place uh in in east middle east uh mediterranean east mediterranean between turkey and uh greece that france also involved uh, Turkey is supporting more nationalist politicians in northern cyprus it's fair to say that uh the people who the politicians who want to uh want a reunion of cyprus are not on the stage anymore talking about the north part of the island uh, but people who uh backed by turkey are more powerful and they are not of course these people are not talking about reunion or re reunion of the island so you know, it's it's very strategic place for Turkey, strategic location for Turkey because Turkey has a um, drone air base, drone base in Cyprus, and uh, there are plenty of Turkish soldiers on the island. It's it's quite important for Turkish security, and of course it's important uh, for the gas pipelines and uh, oil pipelines. And what's going on in Cyprus right now are is very interesting. Uh, I don't know if you know of that or no. Uh, but last week, one of the uh, leading uh, gangster, mafia leader of Cyprus, has been killed uh, by someone. Uh, this person is quite interesting because uh, the other leading uh, major Turkish mafia leader who is in the United Arab Emirates right now, uh, the one who take the video and threat Turkish government, uh, like, like uh, discovered the... Uh, 
uh, sorry, unveiled the uh, secrets about Turkish government in the United Arab Emirates was talking about this guy, the one who was killed in the Cyprus. And uh, in Turkey, people right now people are talking about are we back to 90s? Because this kind of uh, associations like uh, killing, uh, threats were taking place in 90s. Now we are in 2022 and the same scenario is going on right now. So it, it's kind of cleaning up people who against Turkish government. Anyone against the uh, uh, policy of Turkey uh, is having a hard time in the Cyprus. It's interesting. So yeah. they want to make stronger the position of Turkey in the island. So yeah. um, it's curious, but uh, we were told that uh, in any case, um, with a um, uh, situation with uh, um, uh, war inside a country like uh, Georgia, Ossetia, Abkhazia, okay. or um, Transnistria in Moldova, or uh, any case like that, uh, was unable to join the Western institutions. But European Union became the partner with uh, Cyprus instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, like you say, it's European Union, the south part in de facto is the part of European Union and Turkey is member of NATO and it's candidate for the European Union. Uh, so it's it's quite interesting to see what's going on and, and here on this point I will say uh, the European Union has to take um, take uh, uh, take the role to solve in solve uh, to solve the problem in the Cyprus. Uh, now some people are talking about maybe it was a mistake to accept Cyprus in the European Union because uh, accepting Cyprus to European Union is like uh, accepting Ukraine in the NATO. You know, part of Ukraine is uh, uh, part of Russia in the de facto now. Even even in the de jure, uh, de jure it's uh, Ukraine. It's de facto Russian. Like Northern Cyprus is de jure is uh, legally part of European Union, but de facto it's an independent country. So yeah, European Union has to take role to solve the problem, and apparently they are not very willing. Uh, there, it seems like it seems like there is no common sense about Cy Cyprus in the European Union. Yes, and we have uh, inside NATO, Greece, Turkey, and the islands, and a potential conflict, even a war, yeah. by those uh, islands that are just on the coast uh, of uh, the countryside of Turkey. Yeah, like in the 90s, Turkey and Greece were very close to war only because of a uh, very tiny island in the, in the Mediterranean. Uh, they were very close to war, like uh, US and the European Union uh, take initiative to solve the problems. Uh, but it, it's quite ridiculous to neighbor country, uh, to NATO ally were very close to war. It's, it's, it's really funny. Uh, even even what ha what happened last year was very funny actually. Uh, Turkey sent uh, ships to uh, around Greek islands. They signed uh, agreement a uh, maritime agreement with Libyan government, and uh, Greece were, was like, hey, they're, they're islands. When you when you sign agreement with Libya, and you consider this area as your part. But there is something wrong because my islands in middle of this place, in middle of this location. How how come you sign this, uh, this kind of argument? Uh, in in international law, it's it's very funny. I would say like uh, yeah, you sign agreement, you can sign agreement with anybody, but it doesn't mean you uh, you have right to do so or like it will work. Apparently, it didn't work today. Nobody talk about Turkish Libyan uh, agreement anymore, and. Apparently, France and uh, Greece is the winner of the conflict conflict of last year, 
and now Turkey is not sending the warship to Mediterranean anymore and they are not talking about gas or something like that but something Turkey uh, are happy with is that uh, the US uh, United States government withdrew his support to Greece uh, uh, for the pipeline between Israel and Greece uh, I don't remember the name what's what's called but you know uh, Egypt Israel Cyprus and Greece were planning to make a pipeline alternative pi pipeline for the gas uh, to transport uh, from Middle East to transport to Europe and in the beginning US was very uh, very happy about that like they were separate thing they were like why not we can we can provide uh, financial funds and we can support you in, uh, diplomatically but suddenly last month they withdraw their uh, support so turkey is quite happy about that uh, nobody knows the reason personally I, I am very curious what is the reason that us made this decision uh, but it's quite interesting i would say yes i, I read about it yeah i don't but i don't know what what turkey wanted what uh, to take back the island uh, or some islands, uh, because um, it's uh, some kind of link of the actual government uh, in Turkey with the Ottoman times. Mm -hmm. The Ottoman Empire lost uh, the islands uh, after the First World War and uh, they became Italian. And the yeah. uh, idea of um, the change of um, the side in the war and that Italians supposed to be in the uh, German side at the beginning of the war, but they were crown uh, that side and they became part of the entente uh, of the Allies and uh, they wanted in uh, Versailles, in Paris, in the agreement, uh, they wanted some uh, greetings about uh, what they did in war, especially in the mountains. And they get, uh, they obtained uh, some uh, the islands, uh, roads, and uh, uh, and uh, after the Second World War, Italy lost, uh, um, but uh, they also changed their side, uh, starting yeah. with Germany uh, after yeah. the coup of um, uh, with the king, um, the, the general. Um, but uh, uh, they they gave the uh, the islands to Greece. Yeah. And I don't know, uh, they, they link, uh, we want uh, Mark, uh, we want uh, the Ottoman side uh, islands uh, for the new Turkey. What is the the, the, the tale, the tale they, they, they say to the people, to, to whatever they want? Mm -hmm. uh, Juan, you know what, uh, if you look up the Turkish policy, in the recent years, you notice that the Turkish government wants something in Libya, Syria, or uh, East Mediterranean, something really maximalist, like they want something really huge, all right? And then uh, you find in conflict with the Turkish government. And then uh, in the end, Turkish government is like, okay, I don't want that much, but I'm okay with that much. You know what I mean? Like in the first day, you want too much, but in the end, they are okay with the half. It's it's kind of strategy of Turkish government. Uh, it it may goes back to Ottoman time. I don't know, but it's like, uh, for example, in in East Mediterranean, they are like, hey, we want all these islands. Even in reality, they don't want the islands. But this is what they say. This is what they say to uh, to overcome the situation. You see the strategy, you see the tactic of the government. So uh, it's hard to say what they want, what uh, Turkish government want in Mediterranean. Uh, but apparently, I mean, for sure, they don't want the islands. Uh, they already have an island, half of islands of Cyprus, Cyprus Island. And uh, Turkish government already have big problem with that. Uh, you know, there is no, almost no economy of Cyprus. Turkish taxpayers pay money for the salary of the workers or like governmental uh, institutes in the in the northern Cyprus. So it's it's also I mean in geopolitics it's um, it's benefit it's in favor of Turkey, but in the financial wise it's not it's not really wise it's not really um, 
uh, it's not helping Turkish economy anymore. And as you know, Turkish economy is not doing good right now. Uh, so I'm sure that Turkey is not, Turkey doesn't want all the islands, but of course they will say we want islands to, uh, as per all of their tactic strategy. Yes, it's interesting, the economic issues, uh, it, uh, it's uh, some kind, always uh, economics. There, there is uh, some kind of, uh, how, how to say, if uh, there is a um, director in the Bank of Turkey that uh, goes against the policy of the government, it's uh, removed, uh, and even if uh, the finance minister goes to um, say something against the public policy, it uh, is also removed. It, there is uh, some kind of hyperinflation uh, movement and a view to economics of some kind of uh, Islamic uh, economy, but uh, not uh, ancient uh, interpretation of um, Islamic uh, economy, instead of a uh, very early uh, 20th century uh, interpretation of uh, Muslim Brotherhood. Um, so it's it's a curious uh, uh, idea of um, those um, type of economy that has. Uh, almost sunk uh, Turkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. Uh, well, in Turkey, people are arguing about that. Uh, and personally, I have doubt that Turkish government really wants an Islamic economy. Uh, all right, they they decrease the political, uh, how do you call it? Uh, interest, political interest of the central bank. Uh, which is which is banned in Islam. That's true, but in other hand, the uh, bank interest or uh, interest in any case, like fine, electricity bill, and this kind of things, are uh, operative in Turkey. So, I mean, yeah, the central bank is not uh, paying uh, political interest, but there is interest in the bank. Now we don't have completely Islamic system islamic uh, islamic economy and i i really have big doubts that the aim the the goal is islamic economy it's more like to shifting uh value from this part of country and that, to that part of country all right it's like creating own economy but i really doubt it's about it's about islam or religion and yeah, as like you say, it's it's interesting. Uh, the president already removed ministers and uh, president of central bank. Yeah, uh, but I will say the new uh, finance minister is one of the favorites of the president <laughs> right now. He's quite happy and he's uh, doing well as as minister. And, uh, and recently, he was like he made a statement that role of central bank is not important anymore we remove central bank in the like in, in process of decision making so central bank is yeah for sure they are trying a new uh, economic system economic model like a new uh, governmental model we have in turkey right now uh, it's it's quite interesting but uh, yeah i don't think it's it's about uh, islamic or religion so it uh, may be some rhetoric, uh, some mm -hmm. uh, time of uh, public uh, postulate. Um, to but but they say uh, you you have not uh, opportunity of uh, margin of benefit because God said to us um, it was unfair to make those issues on economy but they, they 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 day by day they say those uh, those things or at least uh, um, uh, we in the uh, western media um, we read uh, those those uh, statements uh, about uh, what is uh, um, possible or not possible because of uh, what god said about the economics but if it is uh, a public uh, posture that uh, 
at least uh, if there is a problem uh, they order uh, print more money pr and uh, printing more money and the prices uh, go up and uh, the economy goes down we have yeah. seen it in many cases Zimbabwe, Venezuela, Germany in the 30s yeah. it has uh, proven many times but uh, they go on those uh, those side. It's curious because uh, it's uh, a close election, uh, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. Uh, next year we are supposed to have an, an election, and uh, yeah, this all things can be related to election. Actually, the election is really important, and uh, right now Turkish people are arguing the political parties the opposition parties and the partner of the president's party uh, are arguing who can run for the presidency for example because the current president uh, in the in the second term of his presidency already in the office in the second term is the second term in the office and uh, the opposition party probably will say he cannot run for a, a new term uh, according to law but his partner party, who is a uh, ultranationalist, Grey Walls, you may have heard about them, uh, they already make statement that there is no legal obstacle for him to run for a new term in the office. So now people are people are debating about that. I mean, the politicians and the people, public himself. And something major took place yesterday in Turkish politics. I think it is the first time in history. Uh, six opposition parties, uh, leader of six op opposition parties, uh, held a meeting uh, to uh, to make a roadmap for the next election. They forced, they tried to force the ruling party to uh, for a uh, snap election, earlier election, uh, but until now they are not success. Uh, they are not able to force force them. Uh, for a snap election, and from my, in my opinion, it's it's not really possible to have a snap election uh, since the popularity of ruling party is really going down uh, since the economy is not doing well uh, since a couple of months ago. Uh, as you know, Turkish dira is almost collapsed. It's kind of hyper uh, inflation, like you say. And there is other other problem in Turkey right now that electricity bills. People are taking streets. They are making a demonstration. Uh, after a long time, I would say people are taking street. Uh, you know, since this coup uh, d'état attempt in 2016, almost all demonstration and public uh, uh, public protests were banned. It's not easy to take streets to protest government anymore. But uh, for the electricity bill, people are really angry uh, because it's really, really huge increase in the bills. People are really furious about them. And opposition parties, uh, all, of course, they are trying to use this, um, this uh, potential to force the ruling party for a snap election. But so far, it's not, uh, it's not easy to say there will be a snap election. They can have a uh, chance w if we see what happened in Istanbul election that okay. they won uh, mayorship, but uh, it may be real that uh, with a uh, confused democracy that we can say it's Turkey, mm, at least now, they can. Um, in, in any country where the people is angry, they can vote uh, another people and uh, get another government, uh, but uh, it may be uh, a government that uh, won't rule forever. And it's a problem when the, on the upper side of the priorities, they say our survival is more important than uh, the way the people rules their lives. So it's uh, curious, but uh, in some kind of uh, ways here they say if uh, 
Turkish people are angry. It's more likely that they get their car and go to Germany that uh, they can change the government they have. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's another another thing. Uh, many educated people are trying to leave leave the country. It's it's a fact, and yeah, uh, and people who stay in Turkey are angry with people who live in abroad uh, in in Germany, particularly. Uh, you know, it, it's really weird. Uh, uh, the communist Turkish community in Germany. Uh, are pro-left in ele German elections they vote for the left parties like uh, more liberal parties but when it comes to Turkish elections they vote for the right-wing parties and people in Turkey are really angry about this as well they're like how come that you support left-wing parties in Germany and in Turkey you support Turkey where you are not living you you support right-wing party and people are already start arguing that maybe it maybe we have to ban German Turks to vote in Turkish elections not not only Germany but uh, like in other European countries uh, yeah it, it makes sense right if you are not living in Turkey why you are why you are voting for Turkish elections Th that makes quite sense and uh, the other thing is that uh, in Turkey right now the street interviews are, are quite popular you know, some uh, some freelance journalists take their mic and the camera, and they ask random people uh, their opinion about economy and uh, opinion about the government, uh, foreign policy, economy, this kind of things. And majority of people are angry. Those who are happy are, interestingly, uh, the people who are not living in Turkey but living in Europe. And they're like, hey, Turkey is nice because uh, everything is cheap for us. So we love we love the situation in Turkey. And you know, it's it's kind of insulting to your locals. <laughs> and you know, uh, right now people are angry about them. So this is why they start arguing that maybe they have to ban uh, European Turks to vote in Turkish elections. And uh, we ha I have a curiosity, finally, of our Turkey. There are some. International regulation of Bosphorus and the use of the channels. So, uh, Turkish government wanted, like uh, in Nicaragua, to make uh, competence to, to the Panama Channel. They want to make a secondary way to uh, a straight uh, a channel. Uh, uh, in Nicaragua, at least, uh, there was a uh, um, confrontation with uh, native uh, tribes uh, and they withdrew um, mainly because they had no money. China was giving money and they had no opportunity. But in the natural issue, this was uh, a huge uh, um, conflict uh, with uh, some peoples. But uh, in Turkey, it's the way uh, watching with Google Maps, uh, we can see there was uh, a flow uh, on some kinds and uh, possibly some uh, settlements uh, in in dense uh, people area. So, what's uh, it's a geopolitical interesting issue uh, over that? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's about politics. It's uh, this project called crazy project in Turkish uh, in Turkey and in Turkish Chilgun project which literally means crazy project yeah they want to build a straight uh, personally I don't know why they need it actually I, I really don't know since we have a natural one why we have why we have to do the new one um, I really don't know the reason and well actually I know I know the reason the reason is that uh, building a new city and uh, making taking more investment from Gulf countries like Qatar and uh, uh, Emirates and you know the rich Middle East countries and apparently they think it's good it will be good for Turkish economy but they forget the international law you know uh, they think that once they built the strait uh, the ships warships or trade ships will take the new strait instead of the Bosphorus. Uh, but the new strait will be more expensive than the, the old one. So nobody explained, nobody explained why 
the foreigner ships will take the new strait. There is no explanation, and nobody know how and why. But they are like, like we will do that. Even even you want or no, we will we will do that. We will build the strait. So it's it's heavily connected to uh, Turkish domestic politics as well because opposition party also uh, against this project. You know, since the mayor of Istanbul from the opposition party after an uh, uh, problematic elections, not one election but two elections, uh, he also challenged the president. He's like, I will never let you make this project. On the other hand, president is like, no, we will do, we will complete this project, even, even uh, you, if you want or no. So uh, there's other. Uh, scenario is that you know uh, there are five companies construction companies who are very close to the government so far the new airport uh, new presidential palace and many construction uh, projects in Turkey have been done by this by these uh, companies so it's I mean I'm very sure that the new project will be will be uh, completed by this five uh, construction company as well and since they are very close to government uh, people already start thinking that it's not about economy it's not about uh, politics but it's all about saving uh, their people Kurdish dreams yeah. don't uh, give um, the image um, we are the good ones the good guys and we know everything what we do is good But uh, watching, uh, not uh, being engineer, we can see that uh, a natural way to transportation, it's more uh, possible to um, contain more uh, boats or uh, ships than uh, an artificial one. It's more likely to get uh, closer from one side to other. But uh, we are talking the people that in Santa Sofia they change the uh, type of uh, building from a multicultural building that was a hundred years point to um, living within uh, our cultures to uh, make it again a mosquito. Uh, so uh, that, that people it's more likely to say I do because I am and uh, it's good. So, what uh, what happens uh, we will see uh, for the yeah. good uh, neighborhood, neighborhood because uh, geography is the most powerful argument. Turkey is not uh, moving to another continent and uh, the good neighborhood uh, to the European Union to Greece it has to be uh, a good point in in future, uh, so we can get that point to go uh, on the other side to um, the other land uh, in the Mediterranean. Because uh, as uh, part of the state of Spain, we see on the other side of Morocco and Algeria with uh, some problems. Uh, but it's curious, uh, all that land, uh, at least uh, main uh, Morocco and all Algeria, was part of the French Empire. Uh -huh. um, and uh, it's curious because uh, there's some kind of changing lands, um, uh, the new area that was uh, in past uh, part of Morocco uh, after the French colonization was part of Algeria. It's uh, part of the um, history of actual conflicts between two countries that may be uh, two partners in theoretically theoretically it it ha they have all all to be good partners and uh, complete themselves in a good economy uh, in strategic projects but they are just uh, like brothers one with other in uh, conflict yeah uh, actually the conflict between algeria and morocco is quite interesting but on the other hand it's very classic a uh, conflict that can be seen in uh, almost all post-colonized uh, region, like in Syria, there is there is the same thing. I will say uh, there's conflict between uh, Nusairis and uh, Sunnis.
So uh, what's happening in Syria right now is uh, outcome result of, of this uh, conflict. And it's almost the same thing happening in Algeria and Morocco, actually. It's, it's classic post-colonization uh, uh, problem. Uh, like you say, these two nations are same nation, I would say, the same language, same uh, culture, same, uh, same DNA, same uh, religion. Uh, but yeah, somehow there is a territorial problem between two countries in, in 50s, when Algeria, uh, 50s and 60s, uh, when Algeria became an independent country, a new independent country, uh, Morocco, Morocco thought it will be easy to take uh, their part from Algeria and they found themselves in a war, but surprisingly, uh, I think it's fair to say that surprisingly Algeria won the war and uh, they recapture the uh, area of Bashar, Tlemcen and Tindouf from Morocco and uh, you know, Juan, it's, it's fair to say that uh, the problems between two nations goes back to Ottoman rule. In my thesis, I also wrote about that. Uh, even in, under Ottoman rule, Moroccans were complaining about Algerians. Like, uh, they were like they were making a uh, complaint about Algeria to Ottoman Sultan that Algerians are, are not being uh, nice neighbor, neighbors to us. They never respect the borders. They never respect the rules. Maybe in this time it was not territorial problem, but it was uh, problem uh, diplomatic problems. So what's happening uh, today in uh, Sahara, uh, Western Sahara? Let's make it uh, let's make it clear. When you say West Sahara, it's a country, uh, non recognized country called West Sahara, but in Arabic language Sahara means desert. So when you say Sahara, it's also part of Algeria. Uh, the soft part of Algeria. So what's going on uh, between these countries are interesting. Uh, since Morocco is looking for new allies, they already found a new ally actually, in, uh, which is Israel. And there's a win-win relationship between two nations. Since Israel want to, uh, want to repair relationship with Arabic and uh, Muslim countries in the region, Middle East and North Africa, I mean. Uh, but traditionally, Algeria is uh, one of the biggest supporters of Palestinian cause. And since uh, already there are problems between Algeria and Morocco, there is a new problem, which is Israel, between two countries. And apparently, Morocco is looking for new weapons and new technologies, new military technologies from the US and Israel. And on the same time, uh, Algeria is uh, buying uh, huge amount of weapons from Russia and China. They already stopped uh, buying weapons from France, but now the, the biggest uh, weapon uh, supplier of Algeria is Russia. So yeah, Alger it's, it's, uh, Algeria openly arming the Politero, uh, which is Western Saharan uh, self-government. Uh, but Morocco never recognized this uh, independent country. They consider Morocco considers this part as uh, part of Morocco. Last year it was very tense situation. Uh, the two nations were almost in other war. It was very close to a new war, but somehow the diplomacy won uh, overcome to uh, military conflict. Uh, but right now, I will say it is a uh, it's it's a uh, calm situation. It's true that uh, none of them have a stable regime in Morocco. It's uh, appearly more stable, but uh, they had in the seventies and in the eighties some clashes within uh, the armies and the palace, uh, the monarchy. Uh, there was. Uh, attacks uh, on uh, the helicopter of the king that has to flee uh, close to the land and not to be um, destroyed and uh, there are more uh, openly uh, this is civilization in Algeria government since uh, Bouteflika was uh, outside the power and died uh, finally 
uh, he died uh, yeah, he yes uh, died. Uh, and uh, in the in the cabilia there are some uprising not uh, clearly but uh, uh, but not as uh, in Libya that uh, in 2011 there was a Arabization process uh, that uh, the Tuareg uh, was uh, very uh, against against uh, that uh, idea but uh, uh, for the very beginning uh, it is said that uh, the uh, United States and Morocco has uh, tight lines and uh, in the Cold War uh, mainly on that side or possibly uh, the um, collection of uh, partnerships uh, Algeria is uh, close to the Soviet Union and uh, mm -hmm. till today they buy Suhois and uh, other uh, war machines That's 400 for example yeah. so um, they they see in Nigeria uh, uh, as uh, the Soviet Union uh, was um, the natural way outside to the Atlantic through the Western Sahara and otherwise it's curious but uh, the Palestinian Liberation Organization uh, was recognized uh, as the uh, government as the need of a state by the Polisario mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, the, the Polisario wasn't recognized by Palestinians there was not mutual recognition Palestinians recognized the integrity of Morocco mm, yeah, yeah that, that, that's quite interesting but uh, uh, let's say uh, Algeria wants to keep uh, Western Saharan issue as African issue not Middle Eastern issue they uh, actually uh, it's fair to say that Algeria doesn't want uh, uh, more actors to involve the, the problem uh, but from Moroccan side, it's it's like uh, it's their um, natural part of the country, a natural part of homeland. But, so, but this curious yeah. because uh, uh, for uh, from um, um, I know it it may be not um, be connected, but it is what when you see in two thousand and ten in South Africa final of the world champion soccer, football, mm -hmm. two European countries, not at all, because there is one African nation that won the world champion in 2010. Why? Canary Islands is part of Africa, so Spain is an African nation. Okay. Okay. In the United Nations, it's the user, the administrator, of the Western Sahara, but Spain has tie lines with the Algerian gas, but they have within Ceuta and Malaya the other land of Morocco. So mm -hmm. it is in the international way. Spain is a part of the conflict, but mm -hmm. in Madrid they say, "Oh, don't watch about me. I don't know what you are talking about." Yeah, you have a point. That's that's true, actually. Uh, like you say, Spain can be considered as African country as well, because uh, the country has soil in African continent, right? Uh, Melar Milaria, I don't know how you pronounce this. Melilla, Ceuta, Mel and yeah. Canary Islands. Canary Islands. So yeah, Spain has soil in, in African country, uh, African continent. And uh, there is territorial problems between Morocco and Spain. Uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but a uh, couple of years ago, uh, even Moroccan and uh, Spain uh, army were, uh, it's like uh, very similar to Greece and Turkey. Uh, yes, they tried to uh, capture an island, right? Yes, but uh, with Morocco uh, leaders were very stupidity because they did uh, after the um, situation of the refugees that uh, were um, they started that situation in 2015-2016 sensibilized uh, some uh, European governments so when Morocco uh, tried to um, 
settled people through the border in Ceuta and Melilla, um, the people in Europe see all oh, those as dangerous. They are people de giving us refugees. So yeah. if they have another way to press uh, the people of Spain, uh, probably the European people wouldn't uh, give an answer, but they gave that answer that uh, concerned Brussels and um, gave all the popularity, even France, with the government of Spain. Yeah, that, that's that's really interesting point, Juan. You know what? Uh, behind, beyond the Saharan problem, uh, two nations, Algeria and Morocco, I mean, uh, they compete almost in all fields, like from soccer to diplomacy, from uh, military to uh, culture, from everything. Uh, they are competing, and like you say, Spain is like, uh, yeah. It, it, Spain is naturally part of the problem, part of the issue, but they're like, no, we don't want to involve. But uh, it's Algeria who wants Spain to be involved to problem, actually, since uh, la last year's uh, tension between uh, Policero and Morocco. A uh, couple of agreements between Spain and Algeria were signed. Uh, pipeline agreements uh, to bypass Morocco, which is quite a big problem for Morocco and maritime agreements, uh, military agreements, uh, transportation. Uh, again, correct me if I'm mistaken, but since Algeria closed all the borders uh, during pandemic, uh, they let the boats work between Spain and Algeria. So it's, it's very clear that Algeria wants, wants good relationship with Spain. And on the other hand, uh, something very interesting took place again last year. I don't remember exact time. Uh, I think uh, it, it's it's very important that the Western media are not talking about him, uh, about this incident too much. It was that uh, Morocco let refugees to uh, go the Spain part, Spain controlled area in the, in the Africa. Uh, that reminds me what happened between Turkey and Greece. You know, Turkey let refugees to go Greece to European Union soil, and it was a huge problem, right? And it was like war between the refugees and the European Union. And Morocco apparently thought it's a it's good idea to copy uh, the policy of Turkey, but apparently it didn't work. It didn't with it didn't work with Turkey and it didn't work with Morocco uh, either. So it's, it's quite interesting. Beyond uh, West Sahara problem, there are um, more prob chain of problems, I call it. Chain of problems about uh, refugees, uh, pipelines, maritime, even culture and soccer. Uh, soccer game between Morocco and Algeria is uh, quite like, it's, it's something else, you know, it's like, uh, it's like battle. <laughs> Yes, uh, there is a pipeline, two, uh, indeed, two pipelines of gas uh, from Algeria to Europe. One is direct uh, through the sea, other is um, connected with Morocco uh, that received some money uh, on the way to uh, go to Spain and that uh, pipeline was closed because the conflict between Algeria and Morocco and nowadays uh, some gas uh, is going or the other way from the Spanish side to Morocco uh, what is uh, very curious mm, Morocco and Algeria has the borders closed from, from the 70s um, yeah. and mines uh, on the border and uh, so they they are uh, very concerned uh, and possibly it uh, may go to another world uh, who knows mm -hmm. um, i don't think there will be war between two nations uh, according to my humble experience in north africa i will say the problems are between governments not between the people uh, last week uh, you know this little little boy who uh, fall down in the well 
uh, all Algerian media, Algerian uh, public were following up. They were praying for this for the small child who passed away, unfortunately. Uh, so the feeling of two nations are same. I mean, uh, there is no problem between nations. There is no problem between the publics. Uh, when they come together, <coughs> sorry, when they come together in uh, in in, the, in a third country, uh, it's like uh, they're from one country. You know, the same culture, same language. I noticed that in Bosnia when I was traveling in Bosnia, uh, I take coffee. Uh, I have been in a, in a cafe where uh, North African people were hanging out. North African refugees. Uh, there, there were Moroccans, Libyans, Tunisians, and Algerians. They were like uh, very united. I will say they were very united. You know, they speak same language. They, they are part of. Uh, they have same heritage in background. Uh, they are she. They share many many things when it comes to culture and the language. So I really don't think there will be war between two nations. But yeah, it's possible to say. Uh, it's fair to say uh, proxy war is always possible. You know, they arm uh, because Algeria also uh, blame Morocco uh, for supporting some separatist uh, movements inside Algeria, which is quite interesting. Maybe for uh, another meeting between us, we can talk about it. Uh, so, like I say, Western uh, Sahara problem is what we say, it's like iceberg. It's uh, it's part of iceberg, visible part of iceberg, but behind uh, there are many problems, uh, very um, complicated problems. We see an approach upstairs, but there is also a downstairs approach, because um, on the south, um, it is the area of Mali and other uh, Sahel countries, and Sahel has been uh, very important in terrorism and uh, the um, situation of some kind of uh, Wahhabism uh, paid by Saudi Arabia and, and other countries of the Gulf because the religious approach is important on those, those countries. And it is said in some people that uh, the view, the national religion view of uh, Morocco could be an interesting approach to contain the um, Wahhabism Sahel uh, religious views. But uh, it is not for now. It is a long way to do if they approach to a partnership with Morocco that it is uh, considered in those days. But as we see, the breakup of uh, Mali uh, with France and the inside uh, approach of Barner, Wagner uh, organization and uh, their militia uh, with close ties, uh, we, we can uh, we cannot say that they are the Russian government. They have close ties, uh, Wagner organization with the Kremlin. They can uh, give another approach of geopolitics, uh, and um, this is stabilize Algeria by the south, and uh, may uh, go with. Uh, with Morocco also, uh, so um, not only um, it has a, a multi-level approach to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Like Sahel, maybe first we talk about Libya. Libya is under uh, battlegrounds between Algeria and Morocco. Uh, as the largest country of the Maghreb, Algeria wants to lead the uh, peace process in Libya. And since Libya has bordering to Algeria, uh, Algeria sees himself as a natural uh, peace broker in the conflict. Uh, but on the other hand, Morocco, uh, as it has suffered from the West, particularly France and the US, uh, Moroccan government also wants to take initiative in Libya. So they are competing in Libya as well. And in Sahel, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. Like you say, Russians are in Sahel. They are trying to increase their um, uh, their power 
uh, for sure, Algeria is is uh, in favor of Russians, and like you say, Malian government, the, the military government of Mali, uh, has good ties with Russians, and France is getting less popular day by day. Uh, if you remember what uh, the demonstration in in Mali, uh, it was quite pro-Russian and uh, anti-France. It was very interesting. Malian people are for sure very really angry with the, with the France and in the Sahel Morocco is for sure the, the best ally of uh, France but apparently uh, they also need support from Algeria without Algeria it is really hard to solve the problems in Sahel uh, this jihadist organization uh, like uh, I mean until now they are not able to the Western powers uh, are not able to overcome uh, against these jihadist organizations, and it's like uh, it's like uh, like stable situation. They couldn't. They they are not able to defeat these organizations. Uh, maybe in that sense, France has to increase relationship with uh, Algeria. Uh, you know, you know, if you remember what happened last year, uh, Algeria closed the airspace to France, and even even though French army uh, state that. Uh, it's it's not a big issue for their operation in Sahel, but in fact, I think it's it's a big issue because Algeria has a huge soil, huge huge land, and and uh, also it has a big army and uh, one of the leading diplomatic power in the region. Of course, you need Algeria to overcome to solve the problems in Sahel and Libya. So we can uh, see. Um conflicts between Morocco and Algeria outside uh, the direct uh, confrontation yeah. um, but not uh, going to war one to one uh, mm -hmm. instead uh, that uh, confrontation outside on other scenarios mm -hmm. so far it's like a proxy war between two nations two governments and it's it's more like cultural war uh, it's uh, yeah but but um, I doubt that there will be a clash between two governments, like direct clash. Uh, it's it's not very possible. It's not very likely, in my opinion. Mm, so we could uh, go finally um, to um, make a, a, some kind of a conclusion um, mm -hmm. on those uh, issues. Uh, Turkey on one side, Morocco and Algeria. So we can say that the uh, Mediterranean is uh, still alive. It's uh, a lake of conflicts. Yeah. Uh, because every country has interests and they try to defend all interests and others have their own projects and ideas and they class and it's natural but uh, the way we can solve uh, in those uh, conflicts is uh, what uh, we can change in 21st century so we have to select leaders with uh, diplomatic culture and not warfare uh, culture. Yeah, I agree that. The problem of Mediterranean is that from east to west, uh, everybody wants to be king. In East Mediterranean, Turkey and Greece, the competition between Turkey and Greece, and in the West Mediterranean, competition between Morocco and Algeria are the major problems. And in the mid, uh, mid of Mediterranean, uh, of course, you cannot ignore the Libyan conflict, uh, since Algeria, Morocco, Turkey, uh, even Greece and Italy are involved, and Egypt, United Arab Emirates as well, are involved in the conflict. Uh, you cannot ignore the importance of Libyan conflict, Libyan civil war as well, and uh, still we don't know if there will be an election in Libya or no, but for sure it's one of the major, major conflict uh, in the region. Not, not only Mediterranean, but also North Africa and South Europe. And the major, major um, divide is uh, European Union, and we have uh, uh, the, the the need and the need of a common, further, united policy. It's it's true, but because uh, 
um, separate nations with uh, a view and uh, a local approach uh, has the difficulty that uh, it's not uh, the major partner that uh, could be the big brother in a good sense not a George Orwell sense a big brother on the Mediterranean that uh, United could press uh, other actors but uh, it's difficult uh, making common policy and European Union we will see what uh, goes in in future so uh, thank you thank you for uh, this uh, conversation and uh, give uh, give a close uh, Thank you so much, Juan. I really enjoyed to have a conversation with you. And for all the spectators, uh, thank you for coming and reaching this point. Uh, so thank you very much. My pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you.